Art and science are both investigative. They're both about wonder and curiosity, and they have far more in common, I think, than a lot of people give them credit for. I think there's a really profound connection between art and science. Both are trying to make visible the invisible, both trying to address very important questions. I worked as facilitators of the residency in the group of scientists where the, the artists were placed for the residency. We spoke a lot with the artists, in particular I, I did with IFA and uh, also with the curators from Mars Electronica to try and find the, the, the best people to match them. We spoke about uh, the, the technical aspects of her project, her interest uh, of uh, looking at explosions in the history of the universe and what could be the interesting connection in terms of uh, what is there in, um, in the current system of research where artists could have a role in interacting with scientists and having an impact on future research. This whole area, I, I'm not sure about all the companies, but the fire department's here and this is BBS. They do materials research and testing and they uh, set up inside to burn stuff. Like that is their job, that is what they're great at and it's quite an impressive facility. It's fine for us to be doing lots of pyrotechnics in there because it's made for it, you know, So and they, they don't have a problem. They've got all of the um, health and safety set up, so it's really, it's a great place to work. This will fire up, okay, and that'll burn for a little while, and then as it's burning, this box. The next step is a lot of logistics now, so it's a lot of writing out exactly what's gonna happen and schedules and looking at uh, drawing up plans of the space and all the health and safety documentation, all the preparation, so there's a lot of that now. My name is Karen O'Flaherty and I'm a science communicator at the European Space Agency. When I saw them in action, you know, you couldn't really tell if they were artists or scientists because they very easily fit in, they ask the right questions, people are very at ease with them. This is the guy that kind of ties everything together. He's literally a reflection of everything that I've had to learn to you know, make him what he is. It was astonishing, like, the, the, from when she arrived, and I thought this is this very quiet girl. Um, I think she needs people who will show her how to do technical stuff. And she just opened up my eyes to what was going on in Aztec and also what we do in robotics. I had appointments to meet with scientists on certain days, and then in the afternoon I typically went to one of their laboratories and got, got a tour of what was there. I got to see their rovers and their, um, their test instruments, which was amazing. So I got to see the actual um, physical robots that are inspirations for my work and talk to the people who made them. Um, I talked to a lot of the engineers that were active on the, um, the missions for you know, spacefaring robots and planetary robotics and pick their brain and talk to them about like I don't know, their personal testimony, their stories. So these are appendages for a noodle that allow him to interact with his environment in personally expressive ways. It's human behavior that I'm reflecting on, kind of, like I'm relating his behaviors to what a human would do. In the future, if he encounters a similar experience, he can remember like an encounter that he had from the past that was like the situation he's in now and then um, decide whether he wants to act the same way or act differently and then remember that as well and that will inform future situations and by doing so he will ultimately be developing his own sense of taste which is could also be thought of as like a soft form of robot creativity. So we had to, yeah, I've got some crazy ideas so we need to figure out whether they'll actually work. Um, and then we needed a site visit for the fire department because we hadn't actually been on there and um, Pyrovision are supporting us so it's really important that they do a site visit because they're going to do all the legal documents. She was there on um, two uh, periods separated by a couple of months. She already had this idea because it was part of the proposal but then she was there researching, talking to people who study the sun, people who study stars, uh, stellar explosions and um, star formation in galaxies, all sort of structures across the universe. 
what is it? It kind of is what I expected it to be, but I think it unraveled itself in a slightly different way. It's a series of explosive performances and they were inspired by the physics and the phenomenon of the stars and our sun. It's quite powerful. It's, a lot of the other work is quite meditative and then this piece is really powerful and it, this represents a sense of protection for me. So it was inspired by our magnetosphere which protects us from the sun's rays and the um, sun's heliosphere which protects it from galactic rays and then galaxies have a halo which protects them from intergalactic rays. So there's this sort of inbuilt protection system that, that we have and I wanted this to represent that. I wanted the audience to feel like they were on the other side of something coming at them. And that unknown of whether it's gonna break or not is quite tense. The journey of Sarstorm is a emotional one that people hopefully connected with. I mean, you'll have to ask everyone here, but trying to get people to feel that kind of steady sense of something circling and circling and circling forever and ever. And then every time it passes another star, it's binary, something amazing happens. You know, explosion happens, and that's how we can detect X-ray binary stars systems. But in the meantime, it's just this constant movement in the heavens, which is happening everywhere. I mean, we're circling the Earth, and it's slow, and it's steady, and it has its root, and it just keeps on going. I think art and science together, the two have the ability to open up difficult topics and difficult conversations that it's hard for people to have otherwise. Um, it allows an access point to have those conversations and to, to investigate ideas that might not be accessible otherwise. I think it's fundamental nowadays because we are living in a very complex world and our range of knowledge goes wider and wider and complexer and complexer. So the transdisciplinary connections are very important to, to improve our knowledge. Yeah.